cop watch, policing the police every single day. Well, America's founders, of course, wanted to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And in the Constitution, that is stated very clearly. But now a federal judge is allowing so-called constitution-free zones near the border. What's that about? William Lajeunesse is live in Los Angeles with more on that for us this morning. Good morning, William. Well, Martha, you know the Fourth Amendment prohibits unreasonable searches. And yet when you cross the border, customs can open your trunk. Now the question is, should it also have the right to inspect your laptop or cell phone? Not just there, but far from any border. The administration says yes. I knew uh, that my rights had been violated. Um, and then I would need some help. Islamic Studies student Pascal Abador was returning to New York from Canada when a customs official asked to see his laptop, which contained photos of Hamas political rallies in the Middle East. I had explained it to the immigration officer that the reason I had these photos was that this was my research. Abador was cuffed and held for hours while his computer was searched for 11 days. The ACLU does not a oppose the search of laptops or other electronic devices at the border, but we do think that whenever the government examines the contents of someone's electronic devices, they ought to have reasonable suspicion. But they don't. Whether arriving at a port of entry in Arizona or an airport in Los Angeles, Customs has the right not only to look inside your bag, but your computer, cell phone, hard drive, or camera. The Supreme Court has, has consistently held that uh, border officers can search without any level of suspicion for routine border searches. The Obama administration argues warrantless border searches are essential to public safety. A federal judge in Abador's case agreed and dismissed his claim. We think that having a purely suspicionless policy is wrong because it leaves border agents with no standards at all to follow. The ACLU may appeal the Abador case, but many believe the high court will intervene to reconcile old laws with newer technology. Where the courts and, and I think the, the political uh, authorities need to think through is trying to find what is the right balance between achieving that security end and respecting people's privacy and civil liberties. So critics say this expansion of search powers is typical of the administration's dragnet approach, Martha, to national security. They want the courts to impose restrictions to protect privacy. This is a thank lot you. of very uh, interesting questions. William, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Immigration crackdown violating rights of millions of innocent citizens at constitution-free zones. Nearly two-thirds of the U.S. population is at risk of being subjected to random citizen checkpoints because they live within 100 miles of a U.S. border. By J. Sermo Polos, June 30, 2018. Washington, D.C. The Trump administration's immigration crackdown has brought increased attention to the little-known constitution-free zone that extends 100 miles inland around the entirety of the United States. While the practice of Border Patrol employing citizen checkpoints within this zone is not a new practice, it has drawn increased scrutiny from civil libertarians and they're increasingly popping up. Most people would be surprised to know that far away from the border between the U.S. and Mexico, on highways in Maine, New Hampshire, and numerous other states, U.S. Customs and Border Protection checkpoints are stopping vehicles without any reasonable suspicion and asking them if they are legal U.S. citizens. Incredibly, nearly two-thirds of the U.S. population lives within the 100-mile border zone, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, and it includes many major cities and several entire states, including Florida, Michigan, Maine, and Hawaii. Immigration police in this country are emboldened, Jill Bissonette, legal director of the ACLU of New Hampshire, said in a statement after 17 people were arrested during a Memorial Day weekend operation. We're seeing it not only nationally, but right here in New Hampshire. Government agents' arbitrary checking of a person's personal papers directly contradicts the entire letter and spirit of the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution, which guarantees that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects, against unreasonable searches and seizures, shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath of affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched, and the persons or things to be seized.
Customs and Border Protection says the U.S. Supreme Court has affirmed the agency's ability to ask motorists citizenship status, even if they have no suspicion. Here is the catch while they are allowed to set up a checkpoint and ask questions, you are under no legal obligation to answer any of their questions. If you should drive into one of these roadblocks, Border Patrol can ask you if you're a citizen of the United States, but, you are not required answer the question, according to the ACLU. Nor are you required to consent to any searches. It is important to note that while U.S. courts have generally legitimized the use of various types of random checkpoints, citizens are absolutely under no obligation to answer questions or cooperate with these fishing expeditions. Effectively, Border Patrol checkpoints have become another tactic for the ever-expanding police state to stop law-abiding U.S. citizens who are not suspected of any type of illegal activity and question them, while simultaneously searching their vehicles for drugs using dogs. To give you an idea of how these citizenship checkpoints are exploited by law enforcement, the New York Times reports. Border Patrol agents closed off all southbound lanes of Interstate 95 north of Bangor, me stopping drivers, searching outside their cars with drug-sniffing dogs and refusing to let them pass until they disclosed their citizenship. At least one encounter was captured on cell phone video. Good afternoon, ma'am, U.S. Border Patrol Immigration Inspection, an officer told two reporters with the Bangor Daily News who had heard about the checkpoint, about 80 miles from the Canadian border, and decided to drive to it and record their interaction. What country are you a citizen of? The driver protested. If you want to continue down the road, then yes, ma'am, we need to know what country you're a citizen of, the agent said. Let's be clear. The officer was blatantly lying, as an individual has no legal obligation to answer. Telling an innocent individual that unless they answer questions they cannot travel down an interstate, highway, or another type of road is clearly not in line with the principles this country was founded up but PAR for the course in terms of how law enforcement operates in the real world. Clearly, the assumption of innocence enshrined in our founding documents is no longer applicable when law-abiding drivers are being stopped at random law enforcement checkpoints and questioned with no legitimate basis for the stop other than to inquire about a person's citizenship status and engage in a fishing expedition to uncover possible criminal activity. The fact that a law enforcement agency is setting up random checkpoints, over an area that contains two-thirds of all people in the country, effectively lays the groundwork for further encroachment on individual civil rights and further entrenchment of an oppressive security apparatus. Someone traveling down a highway to go to work, a friend's house, to get groceries, etc. should never have to deal with being detained by law enforcement unless there is a reasonable suspicion of criminal activity afoot. Police use who may want to retaliate against him physically. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch, and I just wanted you to know that uh, I am using this stuff under fair use. And uh, also, uh, remember to like and subscribe this channel. Uh, also, too, uh, keep in mind I do not make any money on YouTube. Uh, this is uh, five hours work a day, uh, you know, fighting for freedom. And uh, I do, I, you can donate with PayPal and Patreon. Uh, I just want you to think about this. If everybody gives uh, to PayPal and Patreon, Patreon is every month. Actually, PayPal you can do every month. I have 12,000 subscribers. If everybody gives, I can uh, quit my regular job and go full-time investigations on Charlotte County and possibly even more and beyond. So just keep that in mind. If everybody helps out, I can go full-time doing this. Thanks.